Joining the discussion, we have contributing writer for The Atlantic and senior fellow at the Trinity Forum, Peter Weiner. And you know, it's good to have you on. You know, he was so morning. isolated at the end. He was yeah. isolated. Well, in he's the isolated way. now. Yeah. Look at like you remember, like in the beginning of his campaign and even during his time in the White House, he always had Ivanka there. Right. He gave her a job in the White House. She and right. Jared. It was all so weird. Yeah. She's disappeared completely, well, let alone everybody else. Well, everybody he's alone. Else so, Pete Weiner, uh, you've uh, you've written a good bit about Donald Trump. I think yeah. what we're focusing on, we focus on Donald Trump, but. It's hard not to focus on people who are still in the Trump sort of cult or under Trump's right. persuasion. I mean, you look at all of these things. Jeff Sessions, he could do the job better than anybody else. And then he's a disaster. He, he, he not, not qualified. Millie, absolute he's confidence in his people. brilliance uh, and fortitude. He's had a brilliant career. Mm -hmm. After a year or two, he calls him incompetent. Uh, I could go through it. You know, Bill Barr. Went from a great man to be to being a gutless pig, and it goes on and on and on. You know this whole idea that oh Donald Trump he can fix it alone. Donald Trump will hire the best people. It's just been proven to be a lie time and time and time again. And the question is, if that doesn't persuade people, will nuclear stealing nuclear secrets persuade people? Probably not, uh, unfortunately. I mean, it's going to persuade uh, a lot of fair-minded people, and I think the majority of the public is going to be disturbed by it. But in terms of the Republican Party, the base of the party, and the core of Trump supporters, uh, I think we have long past the point where there's any line that he can cross, anything that he can do that's going to uh, be too far for them. It is a fascinating and deeply disturbing psychological phenomenon that we're seeing uh, unfold. It's happened throughout history, and it's happened time now and then in this country, but never on this scale and never with a, a presidential candidate or former president like uh, like Donald Trump. So will there be some erosion? Potentially, but not much. And as we've seen, uh, w whether it's a coup attempt, whether it's a violent insurrection, whether it's a civil case in which he sexually harassed a woman, uh, he can pretty much get away with anything with these people. And that, by the way, is I think there are two stories here in terms of historically. One is that we had what's essentially a sociopath as president, a man with a disordered personality. That's always been true of Donald Trump. But the other thing is the complicity of an entire political party, the Republican Party, that went along with him. And that they could have stopped him at, at any point along this, this uh, torturous road, and they never have. And, um, and I think there's going to be a huge historical price to pay, but there's a huge moral and political price for the country right now. Well, I mean, you know, again, I, I talked about yesterday, Pete, after we read, read your column in the, from the Atlantic that, that, you know, these same people are people that were hounding me uh, in, in 99 to vote against uh, Bill Clinton on all four articles of impeachment. Right. So I said, well, we probably need to listen to the evidence first. They freaked out yeah. and said, said yeah. the man is not fit morally to be there. America's in decline. It's the end of our Repu constitutional oh, yeah. republic yeah. because he's immoral. So let me just say, of course, this has all changed. I don't have to name, you know, the payoffs to the porn stars and all the other things that they're just turning a blind eye to. It's accepted. I mean, you say in, in your column, the majority of Trump enablers still know right from wrong. But let me ask you something. It's our tribe. Right. So if Donald Trump has a disorder, if he's a sociopath, what went so horribly wrong with our tribe, whether we're talking about mm -hmm. our Republican tribe, our conservative tribe or our evangelical tribe? Why weren't there more Tim Kellers out there? Why weren't there more Pete Wainers out there? Why weren't there more Russell Moores out there? Yeah, and, and Joe Scarborough's and, and, and others. Look, it's a question that I've wrestled with for a long time. Uh, one way I think about it is how many of these dark impulses existed pre-Trump in the Republican Party that I wasn't as alert to as I should have been? Uh, you know, if you go back over my writings, I called the Republicans out now and then. Looking back, I probably didn't do it nearly um, enough. Apart from that, what's gone on is the uh, y you had a situation in which I think there were deep feelings of grievance and resentments that Trump tapped into. 
and you saw this psychological accommodation because once they threw their hat over the wall in 2016 when he got the nomination, it was one thing after another after another. And if you study human psychology, the capacity of human beings to rationalize and justify what they do in order to, to mitigate what's called cognitive dissonance, that is a sense that your values are at odds with what you've stated, is enormous. I think there was power, longing for power because he was president. I think there was fear of the base. I think there was cowardice. I think there was a hollow moral core and this sort of self, self deception. But it is an unbelievably puzzling thing. I think, particularly for people like you and I, Joe, and, and others who are Republicans, it's probably why we've had the energy that we do on this issue because this is a party we belong to. And to see what it's doing, the kind of wrecking ball, a civic wrecking ball, a political wrecking ball, a moral wrecking ball, uh, it's disturbing for anybody, but particularly from, from people uh, who, were, who were formerly associated with the Republican Party. They should have well, seen and, this. And, it was obvious yeah. that this guy was going to be what he was, turned out to be. Well, and, and Pete, I would guess for you, people that grew up in the evangelical church, you listen to Tim Absolutely. Keller, some of the last things he said. Tim, Tim, Tim said, you know, being an evangelical, used to mean you turned your back on sort of the Pentecostal approach, uh, sort of this, this, this build the wall around your yep. church. And the idea of evangelicals, and I saw it growing up, I saw it growing up, was yeah. to throw the door wide open, look outward, and try to figure out how to connect, how to make difference in your community, how to be there for people who were hurting and people that were in need, being good Samaritans. That's what they taught us, at least every Sunday. Of course, we all fell short of the mark. I fall short of the mark still all the time. But that was the idea. But Tim, one of the last things Tim said was that the word evangelical, it's become associated with politics instead of faith. They've yeah. not only, these Trumpers have not only taken over and twisted and distorted the Republican Party, they've done it to conservatism and they've done it to evangelicalism. Yeah, I, I would just say as a person of the Christian faith, that's been the most personally painful thing to me uh, to see uh, not just the damage to the country, but to the damage to the faith, which I think is almost uh, incalculable. I think what's been revealed, among other things, Joe, is that faith turned out to be subordinate, secondary to certain core identities, whether they were partisan and political or cultural or socioeconomic or psychological. And what happened is a lot of people had a certain preconceptions. They, they started at a point and they used the scriptures to justify where they were. You know, Shakespeare said, devil can quote scripture for his own purposes, and in fact did uh, in, in, in the second temptation. And I think we're seeing that happen. And look, you have in Donald Trump, the person who probably most embodies the antithesis of the Sermon on the Mount, the person of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. And this guy is a rock star and has been for year after year. Now, you could have made an argument in 2016 that they didn't know what he was dealing with, but not as the years unfolded. And by the time we got to 2020, it was so obvious what he was, and yet they stayed. Yep. And it's a tremendous indictment of them, and it raises really deep issues. I know Tim was a close friend of mine. We talked a lot about this, and it really raises a lot of questions about the evangelical movement and what's happened, what went wrong, and what can be done to get it right. I mean, you, you, you go through the Beatitudes, and that's my challenge, always my challenge to, to those who talk about this. They go through every single Beatitude in the Sermon on the Mount, every single yep. one. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the meek, yep. blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the, I mean, I could go, blessed are the merciful, those be shown mercy, I can go through them all. He is literally the antithesis of every single one. And Claire, I know you, you represented a state where, uh, just like where Pete and I are from, the um, evangelical um, the evangelical uh, influence is great, uh, but I want to ask you, I mean, let's broaden this out, not just evangelicals, but let's just broaden out what happened in a state like Missouri, which used to be a swing state pre-Trump, a, a state that you won. I mean, you won in twice, uh, and, and it was never easy. You always had to work hard, but you take states like Missouri, and I just wonder, what has happened that you have a guy, you go down a list of all these people that he appointed that have all turned on him, that he's turned on. Uh, 
he January the 6th, uh, stealing nuclear secrets. I would guess that Donald Trump is just in, as popular in your home state now as he was before people figured out that he stole nuclear secrets from the federal government. There was a poll taken in Missouri last week. And 42% of Missourians said Donald Trump was a great president. 42%. Um, and, and by the way, that's down slightly, but it's still incredibly damning of many, many people in Missouri. And, you know, Donald Trump did something, and people have asked me, what happened in Missouri? You know, we went from a state that was kind of purplish and swingy to one that is bright, bright red. And what Donald Trump figured out, that immoral man who has never found the truth in any walk of life he has traveled, what he figured out was he figured out how to market grievance. He figured out how to mainline to people who felt grievance. They couldn't afford to retire. They couldn't afford to send their kids to college. They played by the rules. It felt like the most powerful people in the world were looking over them and down on them. And Donald Trump figured that out. By the way, he looks down on them, but he figured out how to market to them. It was like the con man who used to come to small towns around Missouri selling things from the back of a truck. I remember my grandmother saying, just walk by, he's going to cheat you. And the idea that the evangelical community in Missouri and many other states have embraced this immoral man who is absolutely at odds with Jesus Christ in every way.